there we go, blue, okay, cool, all right, so uh, welcome to this presentation on bare metal builds, PowerShell in WinPE. Um, yeah, my name is Justin Yancey, uh, I'm going to go through this, I did this yesterday, I'm going to do it again though, uh, originally from Australia, moved to London, now living in Seattle, automation specialist, now on PowerShell, and I don't need to do any more on that, that's me, I love PowerShell. Um, <clears throat> And uh, so I'm just going to jump straight into the fun stuff because I've got, I can talk forever on this one, so I just have to make sure I manage the time okay. So um, we're just going to go over a couple of things. I'm going to talk a bit, I have quite a few slides, like four, um, so I think that's <laughs> four more than everyone else has today. Um, so, so I'm just going to yeah, go through all these because I need to talk and explain a bit about WinPE um, before we can go into a demo of, of how it works. I'm afraid I have to pre prep you for a little bit of disappointment because it's really not that hard to do. Um, it's, it's quite disappointing at how easy it is to, to actually just do all of the stuff uh, that you never thought was possible in PowerShell. So to start off, when, what is Windows pre-install environment? This is the CD that you get that you put into your machine. It starts up and installs Windows. That is a version of WinPE, you've also got the recovery CD. Um, I don't know if anyone's ever made one of those, but that also is WinPE. Uh, I don't know if anyone remembers BartPE, it was a great disc back in the day, but that was WinPE. Uh, that was a very early version. They're up to WinPE, I think they're up to WinPE 6 with Windows 10. Last one I used was 5.1. Um, and they, so in, in I think version five, they introduced PowerShell support. Um, and also like the, the sort of cut down .NET uh, one as well. So, so that's what sort of we're, we're able to get into this now. Uh, we're gonna go over build, how to build a custom WinPE image um, with PowerShell support uh, and how to uh, inject your work into that and kind of just some advice on, on what to do there. What you can and can't do with WinPE and PowerShell, I'm actually just gonna do this now. You can do, uh, it's a WinP is a um, it's a workgroup machine, uh, so you're bound to the things that you're bound to with working on a workgroup machine. So you don't have Windows auth to get anywhere. Um, you can't connect to to network shares, so you might want to look at HTTP stuff. You have to use SQL auth uh, when connecting to databases and so on. And your PowerShell is also limited. Uh, your feature set is limited. Uh, you can't run any anything that's um, like any WinRM based stuff, so you don't have remoting, the remoting stack in in the um, in WinPE. But you don't really need that for what you're doing in WinPE. If you need Win remoting in WinPE, you're probably not using WinPE for what it's designed for. I just like one one slight correction. You can connect to a network uh, from WinPE. Just, just the, and you don't, of course, you don't have the domain. Uh, yeah, you don't have the auth. Yeah, you, you obviously you can. can. Just, yeah, you have the full network stack. Sorry, I should have been more clear. You do have the full network stack, um, but you have to, like, if you want to connect to a UNC path, you have to provide credentials. Exactly. Um, and that means you've got to code credentials into your WinPE image, which I know sounds really horrible, but it happens in MDT. You just don't see it. Um, <clears throat> So a common build model, just kind of like some like a little framework you can stick to to make it easier. Uh, some interacting with databases as a persistent store. Um, just, it's quite easy to do. Um, applying images and other ten files. So this is just how um, this is basically how, how the the systems work under the covers. You just apply a Windows image and then you stick an XML file uh, inside on the on the disk and then it boots up and does its sysprep thing. And then uh, a tool that I've written, a module, which I was going to upload to GitHub um, if, if there's time to talk about that. And basically just this, all of this stuff that I've done, I wanted to share with everyone so we can help kill SCCM and MDT. <laughs> I'm not a fan. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so it's, it's the live CD. It runs on a CD. You can also run it on a USB drive. You can do a pixie boot onto a network image of it. Um, so, and it's, it just runs in RAM. It doesn't require any disks, uh, but you obviously want to have disks on there because it's a pre-install environment and you want to install to it. Um, it's modular, so you have, um, it, it comes pretty useless out of the box by design, 
um, it's, it's just an empty shell and you can run notepad um, and that's about it. But you can then plug in modules like storage, like the DISM commandlets um, in order to, to do disk imaging. Um, and you can plug in PowerShell.net, uh, VB scripting if you like, um, <clears throat> and a, a couple of other things as well. Um, so that increases the size of it, but it makes it a whole lot more useful. Uh, it's used there, free, it's, you download it with the Windows um, Automated Deployment Toolkit. Um, and yeah, I've already talked about the limitation in the features. Um, <clears throat> okay, so why, why would you want to do it? Because um, I hate MDT! Um, <clears throat> so anyone who's used MDT or SCCM before will have felt the pain. Um, trying to, if something goes wrong, which log file was it in? I don't know, I gotta check all three. Um, if it fails, which it does, you have to start again from the very beginning. There's no resume capabilities. Um, you have to hard code disk indexes on there, which gets difficult if you're doing boot from SAN or any of these things. And if you hit a, if you hit a roadblock, if you come up against something and you want to do it, you can't, there's, there's no way around it. You just have to deal with it. Um, <clears throat> You've got limited pre-staging capabilities. You can, you can do it using the MDT database, but um, again, that's limited to certain fields. You can't uh, put your own stuff in there. Uh, and it's very primitive, if else logic. It's the only you run it. What the results of this WMI query. Um, but you can't actually do any super advanced stuff like, oh, go and find out if this is booting from a SAN because like, you, you won't be able to, to do that in, in those things. So, but with PowerShell, you are only limited by your ability to script in PowerShell. Um, so if you keep going, 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 you can do anything you want in, in the build. So what do you need to get this working? So you do need a SQL database with mixed mode off and a SQL login uh, and a database behind it. Now your database, my database is complicated because it's got lots of extra features. Um, originally when I first wrote this, it was two tables. One of them was a, um, <clears throat> uh, just a, a general table that contained all of the information for pre-staging. Um, so it's like the computer name, the MAC address, and a couple of other things like user locale, all of these things. And then there was another one, it just said um, the status. So it's like this build step has completed, this build step has completed. And I did that to support the resuming capability. So if it failed on step 17 <coughs> of your provisioning workflow, you don't have to go back to the very beginning. You can just get the script to say, okay, these are all the things, but I've already done steps one through 16, so I'm gonna pick up at 17. So um, that allows you to go and fix whatever the problem was, because it might not have actually been a problem there. It might've just been an external problem. So that way you can save a lot of time and that really helps when it takes 12 hours to install um, a machine, which it did in, in the last company I was at. Well, we were pulling, we only had one repo, which was in London and we were building hot servers in Hong Kong. So it has to pull over <coughs> the image and then the updates and then it fails. And uh, Domain user account, as little privilege as possible. Um, you might actually want to even use two of these because um, you need to have um, <coughs> the ability to one, map a, a network drive so one account is really a throwaway account because you're hard coding the credentials into the PE, in it, win PE image. And so once that's in there, it's likely never gonna change. So um, make sure that account can do nothing except for map to that network drive. Um, and then another one, a network account uh, to join the domain. Um, it needs to be able to, to join the domain. And that one is hard coded to a lesser extent. It lives temporarily on disk, but then gets removed. Um, that's, that lives in the unattend file um, for SysPro. And then you need a network share containing the Windows image and source files um, for, for packages and stuff. <clears throat> All right, so how does it work? How do we do it? Um, we, okay, so we have the Windows ADK toolkit. I'm, I skipped a few steps here. Uh, we have the Windows AD, ADK thing, uh, automated deployment toolkit, download that. And then there's, uh, you can, using the out-of-the-box tools, there's a couple of scripts that you can run there. 
Um, I've converted one of them into a PowerShell script, which I'll upload, and that'll just do it all for you. Um, so you don't kind of need to take the multiple steps to do things. Um, <clears throat> but basically what it involves is uh, you extract, uh, so you point uh, the, the system at a, um, well, at a, at a bunch of directories and you, um, you just synchronize a, a bunch of source files down to a, a mount directory. Uh, you extract a boot win uh, file, so this is a Windows image file, it's the, but it's the one for Windows PE. Uh, <clears throat> and then um, there's a special file that you can create. So Win, win PE, when it starts up, it will look in the system32 directory of its Win PE image, and it will execute um, a command file called startnet. Now that one was designed to start uh, your the networking stack, but it's just a CMD file. So basically what you do is that you just take that one, which is WPE init, that's all it runs, and you stick your stuff below that. And uh, when that starts up, it'll execute WPE init, which will bring up the networking stack, and then it'll execute your code. Now, that code should not be any provisioning logic whatsoever. That should be mapped to this drive, copy this script, execute this script. Um, so when you're debugging your script, you definitely don't want to have to rebuild this image every time with the script. So all this should do is act as a downloader. It downloads the script and executes it, and then you can leave your WinPE image. You can make all the changes you want to that provisioning script, but your WinPE image stays exactly the same. You never need to do anything with that WinPE image up again once you've built it. Um, you also need to inject drivers. That's the one thing you might actually have to do again um, is... <coughs> Uh, if you're doing it for, say, uh, let's say a Dell server, physical server, um, you're, you're going to need, in order to get the networking up there, you're going to have to inject the drivers into the boot image. And you're also going to have to do it into the WIM image, but I won't go into that one. That's easily Googleable. Um, but it's really easy to do. Um, you just create a directory and stick all the drivers in that directory. And, um, and there's a command uh, at one of the, um, the, the DISM commandlets <clears throat> which just says like import drivers and you point it at that directory and it does it again It's all in that script that I can update So you mount it using DISM you need to add the scripting packages, which is just another command like add Windows package um, to the image and You just have a file location just adds them in there, and you need to do it in a specific order um, That's pretty easy to do so you install the um, .NET 4.5 um, part then you install scripting and then PowerShell and a couple of others, the, the, the DISM package and I think the, uh, and the database one as well because it needs to be able to connect to the database for it to work. <clears throat> so that's it. And then you, you update, you create the bootable ISO image. Uh, so originally I think in the ADK it was three scripts but I, I converted it all into to one to make it easier and we'll just do all of that. So that, that whole script will just do um, everything up to here. You then upload your build script to the network share and then deprovision MDT. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so yeah, up the, the build script to the network share, you'd also put on anything there. Like if you want to put in modules, um, you could put them there. But typically, all I do in that, um, that file is download it. I'll actually show, I'll go to that now and jump over to, to this one here. So this is the create boot WIM file that I was talking about. Um, takes a bunch of parameters. Oh, you can't see? Oh, whoa, what the? How did that happen? Duplicate. <coughs> duplicate, duplicate, duplicate. Okay, so this one just takes a bunch of parameters. Um, deployment share, UNC path, so that's where <laughs> the thing is going to um, grab. Actually, I'll just show you the script that I'm going to put in StartNet. It's down here, and I'll come back and talk through all of those steps. <clears throat> this is the kind of script that should be in there. You've got um, so WP init. You need that to get your networking stack up. Net use user. I've got some string format commands there. You can see just down here. I'm putting those in like that. <clears throat> um, I'm robocopying some modules that I need. Don't worry. This X. Anything with X is the WinP <coughs> image. So when you see this and you think, oh, bad practice. Don't worry because this is a RAM disk and it's going to disappear. Um, so, so that's just a temporary thing. So I rubber-copy the files um, to the RAM disk because I don't want to put them on the WinPE image because they might change. Um, <clears throat> copying build scripts, so I 
echo f, that's, uh, that's just telling xcopy that it's going to be a file. So I'm doing all this in, in CMD, not PowerShell, because um, it's just, uh, well, it's faster to, to run it. Power, running PowerShell in WinP is actually quite slow. Um, <clears throat> but it doesn't matter because it doesn't need to be performant. Uh, so you're copying the build script, so that just needs to be in the root. Here I've called it build script, you can call it whatever you want. Um, to the, the X drive, so the RAM disk root. Delete the drive, and then I execute the build script. And that's all that happens in WinPE. I just download, map a drive, download <coughs> it, execute it. Um, and that's simple, so that means um, I, I make this once, and then the only times I'll ever have to remake it is when, you know, six months later, Dell will release a new driver package, <clears throat> and I want to go and update it, or VMware release a new driver package. Of course, none of us here are using VMware, right? We're all on Hyper-V. Because um, <clears throat> you don't need to do this for Hyper-V. We've already got all the drivers in there, so, so that's not necessary. But I'm going to go up and talk through this script, because this is really what it's all about, this session here. Um, <clears throat> so we're just going in and we go, we've got this, it's, it's a kind of a easy, so we've got um, these things here, so when you install it, this is the route that it'll go to, um, the default one, so assessment and deployment kit, <clears throat> and we just have a bunch of directories in there, like Windows pre-install environment, and then this WinPE architecture will be like AMD64, uh, we're not, no one builds 32-bit images anymore, so... Uh, <clears throat> so we're always going to just set those. Um, we go and we copy them over to this mount. I oh, like to still like to use Robocopy. Um, <clears throat> then we copy this winp.wim file from from here. Uh, and we're going to copy that to our sort of image destination boot wim. Then we go, we're just copying files here. It's boring. You don't need to read this. Um, the magic starts here. So mount windows image, it's one of the DISM commandlets. <clears throat> and so now we're mounting all, all of the files we've copied <coughs> down to this mount path. Um, and then this image here. So this boot wim, uh, this is one of the WinPE, the, the WinPE image that contains all the Windows files that it needs. <clears throat> so we're going to open it up and we're going to give it an index uh, because all of the Windows images, like the disks, they come with uh, multiple images on them. That's like your standard edition, data center edition core and your know, core data center and, st and stuff like that. So those, each one of those it has an index. WinP only has one, so image index is always going to be one. I don't know why I parameterized it. Um, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, so but when you're doing this, because this same script is actually going to be, that you, you're going to run this much of the same script when you're customizing that install.wim file. So you'll need to do that as well. Um, I haven't, I haven't got that script, but I'll write that. It's a very simple one. It's basically this, um, <clears throat> where you mount, you'll mount the, the thing in the same way, except this is install.wim instead of boot.wim. And then if you've got, so here I've got a parameter for driver path. If it's got contents in it, so if it's got some files, then I'm just going to run this add Windows driver. I give it a path, and then a driver path, <coughs> a curse, and force on sign, and that's it. So that's just injecting all your drivers into the image. The boot image, and in the other, the case of the other script, the Windows image. So when the Windows boots up, it'll have access to all the things as well. Uh, we we obviously need to inject it into both images because they both need networking. Um, <clears throat> package files. So that was a parameter as well. I just put them in there. Um, I parameterized it because it just looks better. Um, so we can see in here WMI. We have to add in there. Uh, NetFX, that's the .NET Framework, Scripting, PowerShell, Secure Startup, I don't know what that is, but it has to be there. DISM Commandlets, that's things like our install image, like the DISM, and then the storage WMI. So, uh, where did my database ones go? Oh well, oh, it looks like we don't need the database ones. Um, okay, so yeah, then we've got, we go down, uh, we install, we have, this is a loop, we don't just give it a, a destination so we have to just go through here add windows package um, <clears throat> and that's the path to the, the things there then unfortunately the dism commandlets do everything except for one thing that dism.exe does um, that we need it to do in order for this to work so we do have to break back to dism.exe here um, <clears throat> and this is setting the target path so basically what this does is um, so in WinP it'll start up 
Um, this one will force it always, like the system drive in WinP, it'll force it always to use X. Um, otherwise, it's just going to use whatever it likes, and it's not going to be like, it might not be the same thing. Depending if you've got existing partitions there, it'll just pick some, whatever the next one is. If there's nothing there, it might pick C or D or, you know, if it, I, don't, I don't know, it's unreliable otherwise. So you do this, and that way the system drive is always going to be X. So X, Windows, System32, and that's quite important because that way you can code your scripts um, knowing that they're always going to be X. Uh, now, yeah, so this part, this next part, I'm just creating that startnet script, um, which we put in there. We're just copying the files to that, and then we dismount the image here. So that's, and then we, we have the save parameter there, so that what that's doing is that's saving all of the changes we've made, and it's compiling it back into that boot.win file. Um, <clears throat> we're going to delete the file, if it currently, the target file, if it currently exists. And then this stuff here, I don't understand what it means. Um, I got this straight out of the, uh, when I was converting one of the other scripts. It's a batch thing, I don't know, but apparently this is what you need to do. So uh, don't, ask, don't ask me what that means. It's like some kind of weird, if this is EFI, then do this, otherwise, uh, yeah. So just, that just does its thing. Um, <clears throat> and then this one here is just creating the ISO um, with all of those things. So then that's, that's it, that's, the, that's creating it. So we can run this one here, create boot whim. So I only have one parameter that's actually mandatory here, um, which is the deployment share UNC path. Uh, so I'm gonna do that, that's doing that, that's copied all the files over. Okay, so now it's mounting the, oh, let me copy that over. So now it's mounting the, the Windows image. Unfortunately, PowerShell doesn't really give us any pretty pictures here. Um, it's going through and installing the packages uh, now, so you can see it didn't do any driver installation because I'm using Hyper-V, so we don't need to install any drivers. Not like VMware. Yeah. Because um, <clears throat> unfortunately I didn't have a big rack mount server to come along. Um, that would have been much more impressive. I just slammed down a rack mount, but it would have been very loud and destructive. So, um, not to mention, like, expensive. Uh, so... <coughs> We're just going to do this. Uh, NetFX takes the longest, takes uh, about 30 seconds or so. Uh, it's actually rather uneventful, this whole process. We're just watching a script run. Um, <clears throat> but we have to do it because I have to prove... Oh, wait, I'm just going to go and download... I mean, sorry, delete the existing file so that you believe me that it actually worked. <coughs> that was the old one. All right, so C, power boot. That's now being deleted. And actually, while I'm at it, I'm going to go and show you that this JY demo machine settings, when I go to VHD, I'm going to go browse that JY demo disk is 4 megs, so it's empty, it's got nothing in there. And this power boot is going to be C power boot ISO, which I've just deleted, and it's going to recreate eventually. Um, so, so that'll be the, the proof when that gets there. <clears throat> um, I'm actually, while I'm waiting for that, I'm going to jump into the, uh, the PSSCM, uh, thing that I was talking about. Uh, this one here is, um, <clears throat> it's the automated build system that I came up with. Um, it works very similar to, um, to the, the SCCM model. Uh, to make it easier to um, migrate is you've got what's called a, a build um, <clears throat> which just defines uh, your common parameters like computer name, MAC address uh, <clears throat> and an unattend, X sorry not computer name, not, none of that, it's just <coughs> a build name like an unattend XML template uh, and a couple of other things um, <clears throat> and then you create, uh, each build has build steps and each build step is just a PowerShell script so you can go through there, you can define what stage it runs in. So does it run in WinPE or does it run in Windows? So if it runs in WinPE, it does it here. If it's in Windows, it'll do it after the, this has been finished and it goes back. So that's, um, uh, well actually it's better to look at these, these things here, I guess. 
build uh, so we've got build and build instance is an instance of a build which is a customized XML template a computer name MAC addresses and so on so that way when a machine boots up inside WinPE okay so it's asking me for my domain join password now so I'm going to give it to this um, so that's going to code <coughs> into the, the thing um, but yeah, so, so we go out and we've got, um, so build with build steps and it just runs through all these steps. They've got an order. Um, so the first step in this one is going to be to wipe the, the disks and reformat the partitions. The second step is going to go and it's going to map a drive to the, um, to the network share that contains the OS images. And then it's going to, um, apply that image to the disk. It's just formatted. And the third step, it's going to go, it's going to generate the unattend file and store that on that disk. It's also going to copy itself, copy the deployment script over to the, the new image so that when it starts up um, inside Windows, it's going to execute itself again so that it can start the next steps in Windows. And the next, the, the first, there's only one step it'll run in Windows, which is configure it to talk to a DSC full server. And after that, well, this demo is kind of pointless because it then switches over to DSC to finish off configuration. So. So that's that full thing. <clears throat> okay, so we're done now. We've created this. We'll be able to go to that C drive and we'll see that powerboot.iso is here. Um, and so we can just go in here now. Um, oh, actually, I have to preload the system. So I have a script here. Um, <clears throat> I have this build creation script. So what this does, uh, I'm just gonna quickly, I'll, I'll hit that now. Dom DJ. All right, so that's uh, ignore that output. But basically, what this has done is it's gone in and it's populated the database with a build. It's created a new build. Um, well, it first creates a package source, so it's like a, a location where you'll install. Sorry, let me bring this up a bit more. It'll ins create an installation for source files, <coughs> installation point. Um, so that way if you've got multiple sites across multiple countries and for some reason you can't use DFS, you can have different install points um, so you don't have to copy them all across the world. You define operating systems. Um, and then just new build, so it's just you just give it a version, an OS, an unattend template and an image index. Uh, create build parameters which are things, just substitutions inside of um, the unattend. And you can see here's the first script that we're doing here. So we're going into disk part, so I'm just going to blow away anything that's currently there. You may not want to do that in your environment. You may want to check to see if there's something there and then fail if something's there. Um, a lot of people do that if they prefer because maybe they don't want to accidentally blow away a SQL server. Um, or an exchange server, that could be disastrous. Um, but this one is a demo, so I just put that in there. Um, because it makes the demo easier. Um, <clears throat> I go through, I find the drive letters. I'm just looking at here. I'm going to pick whatever drive letter isn't in use and I'm going to assign that to my system letter. So that's the system letter I'm going to use. And then I'm going to persist that in the database. So set build instance variable. I'm just going to push that to the database so that other steps, other build steps are able to <coughs> retrieve it. Uh, and also, if something happens, if I resume and I need to reboot, uh, I'll go on and I'll be able to access that variable. It's saved in the database. And just this is my disk part script. It's just um, selecting disk zero, clean, creating the partition. This is the system partition, that boot partition. And then we create the, the system partition with the rest of the disk, which is the C drive. And if we've selected more than one disk, we'll just loop through for the remaining disks and provision all of those disks. This is a, uh, and I'm using a string builder object here to constantly append all of that. So in the end, I just have one script, the disk part script, which is string builder to string. Um, <clears throat> and then I run that. So actually what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start this thing up because it takes a little while to demo. Um, power this on. So that's jumped straight into WinPE because it had nothing on the disk. <clears throat> and then we'll see 
Oh, start up the time. Let's <coughs> move this guy up a bit. Oh. Alright, so we'll see that. Oh. oh no, I think I accidentally cancelled it. I put in a escape mouse. Okay, that's alright. Doesn't line up. Where's my reboot reset? Here we go. Don't try and escape your mouse. There we go, that looks better. Okay, so we can see there it's mapped the drive and copied the script over, and now it's executing build script. Uh, unfortunately, I can't zoom into that one. Um, I can barely read it here, but it says, okay, so there it's, it's found the build. That's just a, a, a right output of the build. And now we can see that it's created that script um, and it's gone and done that. Okay, it failed the build. Why did that happen? System cannot find the file specified. Uh, okay, for some reason it couldn't, where's my domain controller? Is it up? Uh, oh, it's up. That's all right. I prepared for this. I knew the demo gods would screw me. I think I my mistake might have been putting the wrong, putting a fully qualified domain path in there. So I have a backup of an image I created earlier, which I know will work because it takes too long to recreate. I'm just going to go through and blow away that. Actually, it shouldn't, shouldn't matter, because it wouldn't have done anything. I don't need to reset anything. <coughs> okay. This time I have to push that. And it should go in and should work this time. Fingers crossed. Oh, well, that's odd. Retrieving pack, uh, mapping drive letter. Let me see what happens. <coughs> it's there. Why would this happen? It worked perfectly this morning. Z. Just a curious question to the group. Is anyone using IPXE or GPXE for, for doing stuff like that. Okay, I'm going to just do this again. Uh, then another question, is there a specific reason for that or is it just that you haven't, you just haven't really any use to it? I just wanted to know that it's useful before. Yeah, I just wanted to know whether someone knew, well, there's a huge security risk that you know that, something like that. So. Okay, thanks. This one. <coughs> Hmm. So, right, 
so this is this is formatting the disk install image please don't fail please don't fail please don't fail um, okay and it looks like it's working yay okay <laughs> it would have failed by now um, okay so now this is the part that takes ages so what it's doing is actually um, mapped and it's downloading the image so I'll show you the part of the script that this is doing here so for what, what did you do to fix it? Um, I blew away everything in the database and put it back in. So I'm not sure what went wrong there. Um, there was just some bad value that was put in there um, somewhere along the line. It ah, might have been a... Um, oh, that would have been... When it prompted me for a credential, I probably mistyped the, the, um, the credential and so it couldn't connect. That's what it would have been. Um, so anyway, uh, that's why you have to be careful when typing credentials. So here what it's doing is just, um, it's getting the package source, so it's querying the database. So all, all of this, all of these things here are fronted from just some SQL, a SQL module. Um, so this is all just doing SQL stuff under the, under the covers. So if I go to like get, get package source or whatever, um, it's actually pretty, pretty simple stuff. This is just a... <clears throat> SQL get PS SQL records select top one package <coughs> source uh, where source name equals that or whatever. So it's all it's doing is executing SQL and uh, returning it as um, PS objects. Uh, so build system variables so on. It's mapping a drive letter. It's going here and installing the um, the WIM. Um, so here we go executing DISM, apply image image file index. Uh, and then it's going to, this is all com like this output plus plus, this is just because I needed to collect the output in case of errors, so that if I need to um, throw an exception, um, I will still have all of the things that have happened to date. So you can see I'm just doing a string join environment, so in my exception details I can throw all of the, uh, the previous logs because um, if this just throw, if you throw an exception inside a script block it's not going to return any of the output. Um, because what this is, is this, this part here is just text file that's living in a database. So it downloads this, converts it to a script block, then executes it. Um, and so you just have to be aware of that. So what this allows us to do is just execute, um, put in any number of steps. So this one's relatively simple, it just does the bare minimum um, that's needed to, to build a machine from scratch, which is format the disks, uh, install the image, and then apply the unattend file. So <clears throat> these are the things the the unattend was customized as part of the the script. So it's just taking a looking at it. You need to have things like to, uh, the computer name, the system locale, user locale, input locale, uh, and time zone, uh, and product key as well. These are the things that you need to specify in order to get past the initial um, log on screen that asks you any questions. So all of those things get put in, they were put in as parameters um, in, the, in the script. Uh, and then of course like there's the domain join credentials as well which also get put through. So we go through, well, the last step of this is actually called BCD boot which is instructing, um, <coughs> instructing uh, the <coughs> install image. Um, that's like the, the boot partition, so it's saying you need to boot from here. Uh, so that's in this BCD boot.exe thing, that one's a, a fun one to do. Actually, worth noting here, um, for some reason, um, uh, Hyper-V Gen 2 VMs um, don't allow you to do these kind of installs. Um, they can only install from, that. you could probably do this over the network, um, but for some reason it doesn't work on a Gen 2 VM. Uh, you have to use Gen 1 um, hardware gens for, for it to work, because they've got this like secure boot thing. Um, and I tried turning it off, but it didn't actually fix it. So um, <clears throat> I just stick away from, from those ones for cause these, these fun things you can do. It's, it's stopping you from doing them. Apparently, they're not secure. Uh, okay, and then this is the, the last step. So we'll see where we're at. Okay, it's still installing the image there. It takes a while because it's got a copy. Um, I think this is like an 8 gig file that it's copying over because it's fully patched. I don't know why I did that. Um, <clears throat> and so this is the last part here, which is the unattend. So the unattend file was um, also stored in the database. 
It was taken from the build. So the build definition had a template and then the, um, where I created the build. Cool, when I created the build, I applied substitutions to that template and then I came up with a unique unattend which was stored in the database. So I then saved that to C unattend.xml um, because that's the first place that sysprep looks for it. I think, well, it's one of the places that it looks for it. So um, that's good enough for me. I just save it to, to that path. The, so that's the, the object I'm dealing with and that's the property, um, the unattend XML, and it saves it to there. So that way, when it hits that and boots up, it's gonna look at that and sysprep's gonna see it and it's gonna take it. Okay, there we go, I missed it. Um, <clears throat> So now it's gone back, it's booting up, and now it's running through the sysprep. Um, so I'm just going to quickly jump into my domain controller here to show you that I do not have a machine called um, JY Demo 2, hitting F5 there. Um, <clears throat> and what this is going to do now, of course, while we're waiting for this, uh, I can jump over to my SQL instance and I can hit F5 here so I can actually see. These are the build steps, like the outputs of the build steps. I can see all the build steps that are in there. If I want to do that so I can see here that there was, there was actually um, five build steps, um, but it only is running four of them because the build steps have this execute if script. So you can basically, um, it will execute that and say if it returns true, then I'm going to execute it. Um, if it returns false, I'm going to skip it. So one of these things was skipped. Uh, the other one will be executed because it doesn't match one of those conditions. But these are the three that have run so far. And their build stage was win PE. So that's why it didn't run the, the fourth one. This this here, okay, so we've got into the run once. Damn it, it happened too fast. Wouldn't have happened in MDT. <laughs> we've been staring at that screen for five minutes. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, so that's so we missed that unfortunately. Um, well, you kind of saw a little bit of it, but basically what that did was um, it executed that build script again um, and it went to the database. Oh, I can actually show you because we have great logging. Um, I can run it here and we can see all of these things. So we can see that fourth one was skipped uh, because execute if returned false. And then this one here uh, is the, the, was the build step here. So that was, um, that's the, the result that it's returned us there. Uh, if I want to look at that build script, that last build step, it's taking this this thing here, which is dirty hack time. So this is the text it's taking. It's this configuration pull config, local configuration manager. Um, it's taking these things. So that's the server URL and the DSC config ID. Um, and it's just doing this, running that command. So it executes that. And, um, and that's going to configure it to point to a pull server. Uh, we can now see that that's finished. I can go into DC1, hit F5, and we'll see my JY Demo 2 is there. Uh, and it's ready to go. So I, I don't actually have, that's not hooked up to a DSC pool server. Um, <clears throat> but we can go in and, and look at it and show that it is. So I've logged in, I'm on the domain as you can see. That was done in the sysprep file. Um, I know a lot of people don't like sysprep, but sysprep is under the covers how everything does OS customization. Mm -hmm. If you ever specify a computer name anywhere and your computer ends up with that name, that's done via sysprep. You may not see it. Uh, VMware does it in their OS customization spec thing. When you go through their wizard, it's like, oh, do you want to customize this? That just creates an unattend file and dumps it on the VHD. Uh, it's exactly what SCVMM does as well. Um, so all of this happens via these unattended XML files. Uh, we're just doing the same thing that they are. So we're on here. We should be able to see my, if I go to local server, I should be able to see that I have a computer name. So this thing will have that eventually. Well, we saw it in AD, so you probably don't need to see this, but there you go. It's on the domain with that name. Um, and I'm going to do this, get DSC local configuration. I think it's, yeah. It takes a while first time. So we'll be able to see in here that I've got my configuration ID. And then if I do the, what's it called? 
dot download manager custom data. Uh, then I've got that um, that URL that I put in there as well. So <clears throat> that was it. Um, I think I'm out of time now, but um, that's a bare metal build. Uh, that would have worked on a physical server or a virtual server in VMware or Hyper-V or any of those. I'm getting given that <laughs> message. Uh, so I'm going to stop. Um, uh, unfortunately, I guess I didn't have time for questions, but I'm happy to answer any questions. I can talk about this all day. And also, last moment, um, if anyone is interested in using this, uh, I'm going to publish it to GitHub, and I would um, appreciate anyone who wants to help develop it and continue on, maybe help in defining some new build templates as well, because all I have currently is this domain join simple LCM configuration one. Uh, if you want to get into like bigger ones, maybe installing driver packs and stuff like that, that would be cool to help kind of push it forward. So if anyone's interested in, um, in doing this, uh, just let me know. Um, and yeah, we can chat. All right, um, so that's it. And push the button.